Hey guys, welcome to Calculus Daily, episode 3. We're looking at three merit questions today in algebra, differentiation, and integration. So this question here, you've got to substitute uh, two of the complex numbers, all right? So you've got to substitute V in here, and you've got to substitute W where W is. That's how you start off first. So I have P multiplied by 3 minus 7i. So that's my V plus Q times W is negative 4 plus 6i. And that's all equal to 6.5 minus 11i. Okay? Expanding this out, I'm going to get 3P minus 7IP plus negative 4Q plus 6IQ. Is that okay? So far? Now, if you remember, with if, if all the real numbers on the left-hand side should equal all the real numbers on the right-hand side. So basically, when I say real numbers, I'm looking for numbers without i. So I've got 3p minus 4q. That's the real number. All right? That should equal 6.5, which means my second set of equations with i, which is that's with i, that's with i and that should equal negative 11i so what i can do is i can write a set of simultaneous equations like this where i have 3p minus 4q equals 6.5 and my second equation negative 7p i don't need to worry about the i because the i's are you know 7ip equals i on the other side but i mean i can still do it if i want 7ip plus 6iq equals negative 11i. But because there's i's on every term, I can divide everything by i. And what happens is, my second equation is going to look like this. Minus 7p plus 6q equals minus 11. So what I have right now is I have a set of simultaneous equations where it's 3p minus 4q equals 6.5. And negative 7p plus 6q equals negative 11. Now, from this point, you guys can just chuck this directly in the graphics calculator and actually get your two values for p and q. Do you want to do that right now? I'm going to show you guys how to do this um, the old fashioned way, which is actually elim elimination. I'm looking at um, eliminating q. All right, so that's at negative 4 and 6. So I need to multiply this entire equation by 3, multiply the second equation by 2, which means what I have is I've got 9p minus 12q equals 19.5. And then at the bottom, I have minus 14p plus 12q equals negative 22. All right, adding it up. I've got minus 5p, 12q and negative 12q cancels out. And negative 22 and 19.5 is going to be negative 2.5. Therefore, p is equal to 0.5. Okay? Once I have that, I can go back, substitute, and figure out what q is. So, uh, what I got? 3 times 0.5 minus 4q equals 6.5. Man, I'm running short on space. I'm sure you guys can do this. What was Q? 1.25? Negative 1.25. Negative 1.25. Cool. So you guys don't need to actually show this in simultaneous equations. You can just do it in your calculator straight away. All right? So, yeah. Cool. The first, I mean, obviously the first thing we're looking at is we're looking for when the tangent is going to be parallel to the x-axis. So for what values of x? So we know that um, the x-axis is a gradient of zero. Therefore, for it to be for, for the tangent to be parallel to x-axis, we're looking for the f dash of x when f dash of x equal to zero. So what for what values of x is f dash equal to zero? Now I've got to differentiate this. I've got f of x is 
I know we put it as f of x, but I'm going to put this just in case as y for now. So I've got x plus 4. Expanding the denominator, I get x squared minus 5x. All right, I'm using quotient rule. So f is equal to x plus 4. f dash equals 1. g equals x squared minus 5x. And g dash is going to be 2x minus 5. So putting this all together, I have f dash g minus f g dash over g squared. So this is, what do I got? 2x minus 5? Is that right? No, it's not right, is it? So x squared minus 5x, and then minus f, which is x plus 4, times g dash, which is 2x minus 5, and all that over x squared minus 5x to the power of 2. Okay? Somebody asked me, do I need to expand the denominator? I'm going to tell you this right now. Don't expand anything until you look at the question in fully and see what you're trying to do. Because you can actually waste a good couple of minutes expanding this or even a minute expanding this when really do you need to expand the bottom. Because watch this. If the gradient is equal to zero, I'm actually telling that this entire thing, the, the gradient function is equal to zero. Okay? So that means if I am going to carry on with this, I'm going to get zero equals x squared minus 5x minus x plus 4, 2x minus 5, and the whole thing divided by x squared minus 5x over 2. The problem, not the problem, if I rearrange this, this denominator is going to go onto the other side and multiplied by zero, it's going to disappear. Is that right? So then all I have is zero equals x squared minus 5x minus x plus 4 and 2x minus 5. And if I expand those things, now this is the part where you guys need to be careful with. That negative sign is, a, is an annoying thing. All right, people mess up with that neg negative sign. So if I was to expand the brackets, I'll leave the negative sign as it is for now. x times x is 2x squared minus 5x plus 8x minus 20. All right, then I bring in the negative sign and I've got x squared minus 5x minus 2x squared plus 5x. Um, I should have really made it simpler, but that's all right. And plus 20. What you should see is I'm working with a quadratic right now. I've got x squared minus 8x. That should be minus x squared. Is that right? Because minus 2x squared and x squared cancels, um, gets rid of each other. So what am, I, what am I missing, guys? Plus 20. Okay. Now, I know that I can divide the entire thing by negative, And I could rewrite this as 0 equals x squared plus 8x minus 20. And now you can see that it's just, just a quadratic equation at the end of the day. So we can simplify this as x plus 10, x minus 2. Therefore, x is equal to minus 10 and positive 2. And there's my two values for when this tangent, um, when the tangent equals to 0. Was the question clear? The denominator. When we shift the denominator to here, it's being multiplied by 0, therefore it disappears. Okay, that's why it's no, don't ever start thinking about expanding the denominator because, you know, if you're working with zeros, you're going to multiply it and you're going to get rid of it. So never think about expanding it and wasting time with that. Cool. Any more questions on this, guys? Pretty straightforward, isn't it? I mean, it's just um, you differentiate it and you're ending up with quadratic. Now think about this. In the previous question we were looking at, we were looking at complex numbers and we used simultaneous equations, which was level one skill. In this, we're using quadratic, which is, again, level one skill. All right, I'll show you guys the next question. Okay, so with this one, I told you guys, you know, um, you've got to actually integrate integrate that function, for, uh, well, integrate the function first, but to integrate it, we need to actually use long division. All right, there are other ways in which you can do this, but I prefer long division. So doing this with long division, I have x plus 3, maybe writing it a bit more down would help x plus 3 and 5x minus 3. So this is 5. Obviously, I want to get rid of the x, so it's 5. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times positive 3 is plus 15. So subtracting this, I'm going to get 5x and 5x is gone. 
negative 3 minus 15 is negative 18. So I can write this function here as, what could I write it as? 5, oh, can someone get that please? Minus 18 over x plus 3. Remember, quotient, remainder, divisor, we can write it in this format. So what it means is now I can write this. I'm trying to find it between... Would it be positive half or negative 3 minus 15? Go on. Negative 3 plus 15 is positive 12. Yes, you're correct. But notice how I'm actually subtracting. Because I'm subtracting, it'll be negative 3 minus positive 15, which is negative 18. Okay. So what I then have is between 5 and 2, I can write this as 5 minus 18 x plus 3 dx. Okay. Integrating this, I'm going to end up with 5x minus 18 ln of x plus 3. Okay. Is that all right so far? And of course, I don't need to worry about um, this part here because the differentiation of this is 1. So I don't really need to add anything else to it. And this, I'm finding it between 5 and 2. Okay? So from this point, it's just a matter of substituting. So I have 5 times 5 minus 18 times ln of 5 plus 3 minus 5 times 2 minus 18 ln of 2 plus 3. Okay? And I think when we do this, what do we get? What do we get? Is it 6.54? 6 6 Questions? So the important part in this question is you can do this in the graphics calculator straight away and get the answer 6.5. However, you must show any integrals that you've used. And so that I'm talking about this part. This is the main part you must show in your exam. All right? Below that green box, you don't need to show. You can actually use your calculator to get the value, but at least you must get to this green part. Questions? We good? Yes. How would you do in the calculator? I'm going to show that in outside of this. Go. And that's it for episode 3. Thank you for watching, eh?